Um, oh, whoa, I went away, hang on. We can oh, see you. you can You're see there. Me. I can see oh, you. Hang on. You guys all just went away. Oh. Hang on, another oh, way. You're back. You're back. Okay. Oh, that was scary. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Uh, we chatted. We chatted today on Messenger, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. Good. Um, I think I've only done Zoom a number of times, but I think it's ideal if everybody mutes and then if you want to pipe in, unmute. Um, Good idea. I'd like you to encur I'd like to encourage you guys to pipe in whenever you want to because um, I am going to try to give a thorough talk, but I definitely we're we're a work in progress. We just started this um, kind of project backslash movement. It feels like it's becoming a movement um, oh, less than a week ago. So so ask me questions and get me to clarify. Um, I'm so insanely grateful that Beth has gathered you all to give me a chance to talk to you. Um, and it's really nice to meet you. I, um, I'm going to give you a quick background of who I am. Uh, I am a bleeding heart, <laughs> which got me into this thing. Um, but my professional background is uh, that I, I'm a freelance tailor. I've been working in the fashion industry for 20 years. I go on photo shoots. My biggest client's Ralph Lauren, so I'm a fit expert. And what I do is I go on shoots and I tailor clothes to fit models. I'm the one who's responsible for if a something you buy doesn't fit you but it looks great on the model it's not that there's something wrong with you it's that i was there right so <laughs> that's me so i'm a pattern maker i'm a fit expert and i was an imagineer with um walt disney world i was a contractor to the props imagineers so my deep dive my expertise is in um textile uh textile capabilities so i had to work with textiles that would be fireproof and weatherproof so as i started and i'm i'm the daughter of a surgeon and a professional, a retired professor in um, patient safety and hospital record keeping. So I just kind of, as I heard more and more about the crisis of the shortage of PPE and that doctors were going into the field without protective covering or wearing bandanas, um, I just felt more and more and more deeply called to, um, oh my gosh, is that Jenny Joy? It is. Hey, Miss Bond. Oh, I, I miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, but um, so anyway, I'm just giving the intro of me. So I just felt really deeply called. I was at dinner at my parents' house and we were all talking about, you know, like the upcoming crisis and it just came on me. I thought, you know what? Oh, hey, Tammy, Tammy Joe. Good to see you. I've got some friends here. Um, I mean, people, you're all my friends, but people I've been friends with before. Um, so I need to turn that over. So I just felt deeply called to bring my background to, to this and see what would happen. So um, started drafting patterns and just kind of working on the fit. I've been, I've been working with my dad at first and now I'm working with a surgeon at um, uh, Advent Florida Hospital. Um, to try to bring our masks as close as possible up to N95 capacity, which means they can filter 95% of the particles of the virus that the, it's a 0.1 micron virus, it's tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, so anyway, I just started looking around um, the textile that masks are made out of the N95 mask is covered in what's called non-woven polypropylene. It's not what purely filters it, but it is the first layer of filtration in a face mask. And I just kind of started looking more and more and more. It's actually the medical grade is sold out in pretty much worldwide because there's such, right now, the United States, if I get too much information, you guys, and I get boring, like raise your hand and say, move on. <laughs> but, um, but the US, we have a backstop right now of 20 million protective face masks for people in the medical profession that are FDA approved and, you know, um, but, to to approach the crisis with the coronavirus we need two billion so orlando is still relatively okay which is why i wanted to start this movement sooner than later we're still about 30 days out from shortage but um los angeles new york um you know doctors are going into basically pop-up pop-up 
they're, they're creating annex places to treat the patients because there's such an overflow in the hospitals. And the FDA has instructed um, the, um, the CDC, I'm sorry, the, uh, I was up at 2.30 drafting patterns and doing stuff. So I'm a mashed potato right now. If I mix things up, just please forgive me. But the CDC has approved doctors to go into the field wearing bandanas. And um, during the H1N1 crisis, there was actually a great study done on the capacity of textiles to filter the 0.1 micron coronavirus to protect our caregivers and also to protect ourselves um, and our communities. Um, a bandana, a bandana has a 3% capacity to protect someone yeah. from the coronavirus. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, honey, I'm on a call. Oh, I was gonna tell you the guys who are uh, picking up the masks, he's on the porch. He's picking up the masks? It looks like he's picking something up. It's all out there. It's got names on it. Okay. Sorry, I'm a depot station for all of Orlando right now. I'm lending sewing machines. I've got bags going off my porch. Um, it's been crazy. It's fun. It's insane. So anyway, three. So a doubled over bandana that's approved by the CDC. Our professionals, professionals are going into the field wearing something that can protect them to a degree of three. Now, it gets more interesting because um, in the study, they looked into if you double, make a, make a, a homemade face mask and you double a poly cotton knit blend, um, not a woven, but a knit blend, you can actually, with the doubling, you can, you can um, guard someone up to 70% against a 0.1 micron virus particle. Um, and if you take an antimicrobial bed sheet um, or a pillowcase, which just means poly cotton blend, you can get 60%. Uh, the highest filtration is a vacuum filter bag, but um, they don't recommend using it because the people using it can't breathe. So we're challenged with, we need to make a mask cover. I'm not making just a mask, I'm making a mask cover because we're creating something that's as close as possible to the N95, which means it's gonna be a four layer piece that'll have the outer layer, it's the first line of defense for filtration, and then the inner layer that brings you as close as possible to an N95. And what I'm doing, the reason that I'm so passionate is I'm a pattern maker, I'm a fit expert, so I'm trying to get the seal as close as possible. But I have to harness a volunteer army, which means I have beginners all over Orlando that bought their sewing machines on Sunday when I post my little thing, and are now making masks. So I've had to make a mask that's as simple, to address the shortfall that we're looking at soon, I've had to make a pattern that's as simple as possible that my 10 year old can do it. Because I need this thing to scale and duplicate. Like I alone, I would love to address this, but I can't. And I'd love to harness all of the professional tailors I know, but I can't because I only know 100 amazing tailors and that's not enough to address a shortfall like this. I am a big believer in the spider network, the, just the spider web network. If I can equip and enable as many people as possible to do a little, we could cover the entire shortfall. My thinking, my thinking was that if we kind of did like a chain letter style thing where one person told one person and challenged them to make a hundred masks and then tell another person, if you gave it, um, oh hi, there's a chat. Okay, am I supposed to be reading the chat or is that for everybody else? So somebody just sent a message, but I think you just keep going and then if you could address any questions that people yes. are in the chat, that would be absolutely. And pipe in, interrupt me at any time. So, um, so what I am trying to do right now, my, oh yes, that's my pattern, that's my digitizer giving me my generation two pattern and yeah, so that, I've been waiting on that. Um, my aim right now is to, and I've got it up on my website. I have, I'm a founder of a sewing school. Oh, I'm also a sewing teacher, which I just felt like with all these things coming together, the Lord really equipped me to answer this problem and that I would not be doing my part if I didn't use my skills in this moment for this one thing. So I'm just focused on this one thing. Like people keep approaching me for dressing gowns and, and you know, like things that are 3D printed and that's just not in my gifting. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to address one thing, but I'm going to try to harness as many people with a simple practice so that we can all address it completely until the supply chain can catch up. That would be, that's my passion is just give people an interim solution to keep them safe while they protect us while the supply chain catches up. So 
I have a website. Everything's for free. All my information is for free. I created the pattern, downloadable. It's optimized to any printer because I've got this wonderful, wonderful guy who's stepped in and volunteered with me to do that. Um, we're all a volunteer army on this. So everybody has just such, our, our hearts are all broken for, for what's happening. So, you know, we're all mobilized. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm moved deeply by you guys and by the response of pretty much everyone. Um, so uh, I have, I have uploaded a pattern that anyone can go to my website and just download the pattern. It's free. I, uh, I kept the language minimal. I have in a blog, I've got my scientific research. I've got the Cambridge study with the textile efficiencies. I've got um, basically kind of my mission statement. And then it clicks you over to the product, which is a free product. And it, it's, the only, it, it's the only way I needed to do something in a day. So I used the resource I knew how to have, I knew how to use. It was a Squarespace. I'm fluent in Squarespace. So, it, and I'm not going to change course. So you go over to the product, you can download a digital pattern. You click to, if you're a, if you're a, a story learner, I have it up on, I have, you can watch me sew it on YouTube and we just talk about what the steps are step by step. Um, and if you're a person who learns with reading, I've got basically the step by step in the pattern instructions. So I'm just, what I'm trying to do in the forefront, um, you guys understanding, <laughs> understanding that the first, the first conversation I had about this was, um, I think Sunday and by Tuesday it had scaled so far that, um, that we're here right now that, you know, like that NPR called me to talk to them. It's, it's frightening. It's, it's not frightening. It's exciting how many people want to mobilize in this, how many people want to lend their hands to this and how far they want to spread information. But it's, it's also, um, understand you guys, I'm figuring this out every single day. I am just trying to catch up with this. So right now, what we've got with this pro practice is, I think I've got about 60 people sewing right now. Um, my, I've got three houses that are central locations. Oh, and I forgot the funnest part. I also started thinking, okay, we're going to be in, we're going to be in shelter. We're going to be shut down. We're going to be in our houses. So we're not going to be able to get textiles. I don't want a variety of textiles. Um, I do believe in the functionality of non-woven polypropylene, which is basically sold out at medical grade, but I'm finding resources. We do have yardage and I have secured yardage to the, to the hundreds of thousands in a, in a, in a, place in Atlanta that can ship it out. So I'm making a relationship with them so people can get it easily and quickly. But it's the same textile that's used in those reusable shopping bags. So I've mobilized people to just gather as many of those reusable shopping bags as possible, wash them first, get them to a sewer, the sewer builds, and then we wash them again, and then we give them to us. And right now, we're, we've already started. Um, we delivered to our first three facilities today. Uh, um, one of the largest communities of um, uh, home health nurses, a nonprofit that serves um, people with autism, and I can't remember the third one because again, I'm a mashed potato. So, but the frightening thing is that um, my requests for masks are starting to exceed my offers for volunteers. And that's what I don't want. I've also started partnering with Dr. Amy Worley and she's been arranging with me. I actually, um, I, I, I was really honored. I got to go to the office of the CEO of Winter Park Advent Health because I want to partner with the hospitals to get as close to medical compliance as possible. I don't want to harness an amazing army of people and get them in passion to do something and then find that their work is not viable and then it goes to not. I want our work it's a lot of work to sew. It's a lot of work to give. And so I want to know that the end point of our work is to serve. Um, I am going to guarantee that in this first week, we've got a whole bunch of product coming out of our community that's probably not going to be viable because we're a week old, but we're streamlining every day. I've got generation two of the pattern. Working with Amy, um, she's a physician who's been deep diving into uh, filter capacities. And um, 
she heard about Orlando face mask strong. I was kind of working off the Orlando. I just, what touched me is like, listen, look at how we, look at how we wrapped around pulse. We got this. There is no reason to have a problem. Like I can teach a six year old how to sew. I've done it <laughs> with a, with a video. We, with very little, we can, we can solve, we can protect all of our frontliners because it, coronavirus is not statistically, um, yet affecting us like it is Miami, like it is New York, like it is Seattle and California, um, and other Colorado, Illinois. Um, and it might not, and that is what I pray for. But if it does, I don't, I don't want us to be behind and I don't want our professionals to be unsafe when they care for us and the people we love. And that's my mission is just to harness as many people as possible. Sorry, now I'm blabbering. Ooh. Okay, back to uh, the textile. Shopping bags, the little reusable shopping bags, the ones that feel like fabric. They like, they have a waffly texture. You don't want to use the ones that are coated and you don't want to use the painted part. You need to hold it up to your face, after, wash it first, wash everything first. The coronavirus hates heat, so the dryer is sufficient to kill um, the particles. Ow, oh, there goes my earring. I'll take the other one off. Um, but, uh, you know, like just use your common sense, put it up to your face, breathe through it. Think, do I want to breathe through this for 10 hours every day that I go to work, you know, for the next however long? Um, for the most part, they're breathable and wearable and pretty comfortable. I wore mine around one day, all day. My dad is a hypochondriac, the surgeon, retired surgeon, and he wears his all the time. He thinks it's the coolest thing on planet earth. He's like, so he keeps it in his pocket. And if he goes outside, even to garden, he's got his mask on. So <laughs> I'm going to make him a couple though, cause that's going to get gross. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we're working in different options with the textiles. I, um, Can I get a question? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Come on. Is this like what you're talking about? That is exactly what I'm talking about. It's that waffly. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Okay. If All right. I have out. 400 of these bags when I started a, uh, a pump pocket shirt business. Um, and so we had the bags made. So I have these and I can cut them up and use them mm -hmm. for, okay, wow. Okay, yeah. are great. The bags, are the bags what you need mostly? Like, I think, I think we've got people on this call that don't sew and people that do sew. Can you give us a, um, a synopsis of what you what you need right now so that way yeah. we can kind of organize getting things to you or yeah you know, delivery whatever like figure thank you and that Beth is exactly the question that I need to direct this to be a useful call what I need is for you guys what I want to start doing is kind of creating micro environments micro movements so uh, I know y'all are on mute if you know how to turn on a sewing machine and sew a straight line and you have access to a sewing machine, I've got three extras. I'll give them away, no problem. Um, raise your hand. Uh, oh, no, I don't need a sheet machine. I don't need You don't own a machine? Or, but can, you sew? can you sew a straight line at the very least? Jenny Joy, you can sew a straight line. <laughs> I've got a sewing machine. Huh? I don't have a sewing machine, but if you have one to... To loan. I, I don't have a sewing machine, but I do have 10 employees who have nothing to do. And so. I've got sewing machines. I have, I think, I just lent one out tonight. I think I have two more. So. Uh, be be Beth, Beth Trace, Tracy Jacobs has a sewing machine if you wanted to use it. She's never used it. So if you want to grab the neighbor Tracy Jacobs sewing machine, she's willing to let you have it. Beth, if we can do it, you can do it. <laughs> oh, there's Tracy. One day, one day I'll get to it. It's brand spanking new. It's about 10 years young, but it's brand spanking new. Still in the box, and I'm eating crow for purchasing it. Aww. There's an amazing collective in Portland, Oregon. I'm telling everybody this that wants to learn to sew. It's called Plume House, and they have a beginner sewing um, download that they're offering for free now during the coronavirus. They're exquisite and they're cool and like the next steps are cool too. You can make these amazing, they teach you to make amazing bags, but they do like a, a boot camp. It's awesome. And it's usually about 50 bucks. It's not, and the, right it's now, not it's the fact that I, it's just, you know, it's, it's been one of those projects that just never came to fruition. So other projects have taken precedence over that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Bonnie, 
I'd like yeah. to talk about this material. So I don't know if you guys can see me. Um, is this the medical material? Yes, that's right. So uh, I am not a medical professional, but a few of you are in the medical field. So you'll understand what I'm talking about. I know a few of you, I've already talked about this. A friend of mine, I'm going to leave names out, but a friend of mine brought this material to me in large sheets, like six foot by eight foot sheets and probably about 20 of them. It is very similar uh, and I'd say even a little bit more sturdy than a shopping bag. And it is a polypropylene, non-woven. And so it, it's a sheet that's, there are two, two pieces of material here. And the, there's some perforation, but purposely the perforation is overlapped. So honestly, the mm -hmm. holes are tiny. Like I have put this up to my mouth. I can breathe. It's not as easy as just cotton, which is good. So, um, yeah. This material is used when sterilized uh, equipment ready for surgery is packed together. I'm told it's called auto mm. autoclave. And so all the sterile, yeah, I know, Lisa, you see it. Um, and that these are these big sheets that get wrapped up. And so therefore, whoever is getting ready to prep the OR opens all of this up. This material is, I've been told by a couple of people now that work in the OR, um, that this material is never around when the patient, like it's already a done thing and it's a one-time use and then it goes to the landfill or incineration. Eh. So wouldn't it be cool if <laughs> we could give this thing another life? And so that was the one that I did a test in my washer and dryer today. I know a few of you yes. were in my text. So I washed the one that I had typically been using just interfacing as my middle layer. And I washed the same, and same. I washed it with my clothes, just like what people might do. And I yeah. washed one with this. Now it's two of these pieces, you know, so it's, I left it just like this. And um, both of them withstood the washer and the dryer. And I left the dryer go to the point that my clothes were dry. I didn't do it any further because there was an OR nurse that was worried about the moisture because I guess this thing is made to want to bring any moisture to make sure that utensils don't get it. But honestly, it was quite dry. Um, I felt it pretty good. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use up this material. But the fact that there could be a local supply to this, if in fact these grocery bags run out, um, yep. and if it's an admitted thing that gets thrown away, hey, <laughs> you know. Andrea, I just want to piggyback on, on that comment there. Um, I'm a dental hygienist, and I know that there are dental practices that may have this material. And think about um, the fact that they are discarding it. You can use it. Um, but I did call a local dental, two local dental supply companies, and they're, they're actually saving that material for their existing customers. And because not just in dental practices, but other medical um, hospitals, they need that material. But I think you're onto something, Andrea, that if they're going to discard the material, why can't you take it? Why can't yeah. we repurpose it? I was going to say that um, I've seen that material you, in a dental office, you line the uh, trays with that exact material. But I also, I work in the meeting business and you know, how many people have you got millions of these bags and you don't want them? You take them and then you throw them away or try to give them away. I could, if these, if this is the right material here, I could source out some of my meeting planner peeps because some yeah. people have like loads of these left from meetings. Yeah, if and I put, out, I put out a call on a net on a neighborhood. So I like the auto club idea, but Andrea, the one challenge as we go into furlough, as we go into shelter is we, we're not gonna be able to drive around anymore. So what I like about the bags, I actually am just putting out recommendations, multiple recommendations. I'm moving forward with the bags, but I love that. But to address the problem, for me, I don't want to just tether to one or the other, but I do want to use everything. I want to use everything because the go forward, and um, Rita or Lynn, you were just, yeah. Lynn, to your point, I put out a post in like my neighborhood, like a Maitland neighborhood, blah, blah, blah group that, you know, like it's like a moving garage sale kind of thing. Like right. you want to sell your dresser, you put it there. And I told them a quick mission statement and I asked for bags and I got boxes and boxes of beautiful new textile. And you get like three masks out of a, out of a bag. Pretty great. Yeah. So yeah. I could ask around because 
people hate, you know, they throw them in the boxes and then they forget about it. And there's a lot of sources in Orlando that might have these. Yeah, I would love that. That'd so I nice. could get on the phone starting tomorrow and just make, you know, calls. Yeah. So would, would you say like a good call of action is to just a message, like do a mass messaging on all of our personal Facebooks and see who has these bags? Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, my, you asked me, Beth, you asked me yeah. what my ask is. Yeah, because we've got people, a lot of people are saying, I don't sew, but I want to help. I'm one of those people. So yeah. you, me too. You give us a list of what you need um, because that way we can send, I can make a list and send it out to people. Yeah. Um, so you guys, my call to action to you, because this is where we're trying to go. If this stays with me, if it stays tethered to Bonnie, it's not going to grow the way it needs to. So I would love one of you. Okay. What every group needs. I put out, like, I kind of, like, I woke up at 2.30, see, and the mind just got a lot of either brilliance or insanity at 2.30 in the morning. I think we should do this as a challenge where you create groups. One person is sort of like the administrator leader gatherer, where it's like you yeah. can, that could be you, Lynn. Yeah. Beth. <laughs> but, or Beth. Yeah. But you don't manage the movement. You manage a group of five. So you are the gatherer of the textiles. Um, if you want to move forward with like the, the autoclave that Andrea has a big stock of, use that. Or if you guys, like if Lynn has access to a whole bunch of bags, use that. So it's like, there's no right or wrong here because, um, and something I'll fill you in on next is really exciting. Um, but then you want to have your four sewers who are just kind of like gracefully moving through the goal. I want to set manageable goals. Like, you know, over this crisis, make a hundred masks. I'm probably going to look like, like, let's be realistic. It's probably going to look like six or seven a day. You'll like, while you're watching Netflix or whatever between work or, you know, like I've got some ladies that are crazy mask ladies and I love them, but then I've also got the really valuable moms that are homeschooling and just throwing in a couple hours to this because it's meaningful to them. So, um, the organizer is like the center of communications, gathering the goods. And also you are out there in the community looking for different facilities that need these. Like if, if, if it's all landing on this one girl and everybody's asking me all the questions and all the facilities are coming to me, it's going to evaporate. And that's what we don't want. So I'm trying now, like in this conversation to equip you guys to band together, do this, you know, um, and, and lead each other and then like as a community touch point, you know, touch point with, with the larger effort. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a public Facebook group that I started on Saturday and it's called million mask challenge hyphen. We need you. And we now almost have 300 people and I've done just the same thing. There's three ladies that are now working on logistics. Cause I, on Saturday night, put up this rough Excel file on a Google Doc where people could put their request of, hey, this facility needs masks. So that way when people are sewing, they know who will take them. I think you started to address that in the beginning. We wanna make sure that we provide masks. It's critical, right? And you're exactly right that the people sewing can't necessarily manage an Excel file. And yeah. the people that are trying to get things, but everybody to best point, everybody can, maybe there's something, right? And yeah. I love how you're talking about creating your own tribes or groups. Very, because very if you helpful. think about it, like Andrea, if you were to put up a post tomorrow and say, hey, me and my three friends are making masks. They're not CDC approved, but we believe, okay, I didn't tell you about the filter yet. Just the doctor has been doing magnificent work and that's, that's the next step in what we're doing. Uh, we believe we're very close to N95 because we're using um, a very, very, very expensive air conditioner filter that can filter 0.1 micron up to 97%. We lose a little bit of filtration because our seal is not as tight as a respirator, but my mask gathers around the face, cups over the nose, has room to put the metal piece and actually pulls tight. So we create a good fabric seal. Um, but we think we're not gonna get CDC approval. We're not even gonna try. The, F, the, F, the CDC is approving bandana. But to your point, Andrea, if a, if a, if a micro community of people who wanna save as much of the world as they can together. If the leader put out word, hey, 
what facility needs masks? Me and my team have 100 as of today. You will get a facility. You will satisfy that need. It doesn't have to be a centralized news movement. It doesn't have to be identity, identity attached. It can be just equipping everyone to solve this problem together. So I would love, because we have got a lot of strong women, a lot, of, a lot of dynamic women in this group, I would love to release you guys to do this yourselves. Hey, Bonnie, my question, I like your vision a lot. My question is- I like you um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like you too. <laughs> um, so my question is, as we decentralize this movement, right, how do we maintain the integrity of the product so that we're actually not wasting work. You know Very what good. So like what you were speaking to earlier really kind of hit me. I was like, yeah, we don't want to like do all this work and all this effort and all this, spend all this time. And then it's not, I understand that it's better than a bandana, but I just wonder if you could speak to that a little bit because you kind of opened that. And I want to know how do I guarantee like, if I'm going to create a little team of five people that our work is going to be effective and helpful and the best possible, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely, I do. Um, we do, we are, I, I understand, I think Andrea is doing something very similar to us. If you want to touch base, if you want to use my pattern and you want to touch base with me, I have right now, I've got me, and then I have actually five administrators who are like handling my communication, but we are all, we can visually approve a photo of a mask. My mask is about as simple as it comes which is what creates its grace. Um, and I can see, I can, I've, I've been a textile professional for 25 years. So, you know, as people throw things up, as it gets bigger, Jenny, it's not going to be like that. But right now, right now, my team, um, my team throws up images of their work. And, and I, I can, I've been able to Zoom teach my team you know, like just tweak a little bit of this or tweak a little bit of that. But if you follow the pattern, which is just a couple straight lines and a couple of like little pleats, um, it'll, it'll be functioning and viable. Uh, it's just sometimes people misinterpret how to work a seam and with an image, we can correct that. And what's happening that I'm loving right now, I, um, I do a daily, a daily live to keep my team in the mindset and also working with how we're evolving so fast it's crazy how fast we're evolving um like my my og my ogs are the ones that started sewing on sunday and our newbies like you know started yesterday so it's like but my ogs are now able to troubleshoot my newcomers which is beautiful we're a community we're becoming us it's it's what I've decided, what I've designed, my ideal was to design something that was duplicatable, that could magnify, and its end goal is to serve. So that's, it's so simple that once you've done it three, four times, you can lead someone else. So, okay. so yeah. Can I, can I like show the ball a little bit and see if I'm yeah. hearing what's needed correctly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so basically, if we were to have like a team of five, mm -hmm. We need to secure the material. Yeah. We need to have somebody who is asking for material and finding facilities for us to give finished masks to. And, and that's your that's your team lead. Or you don't have to call them a lead because everybody's lead yeah. like your admin. Somebody that's who's doing those tasks. Yeah. And then we need four people who are sewing, yep. like who've downloaded the pattern, who feel confident in being able to sew and produce a product that's close to what your vision of that pattern is. Yeah. And then from those four people in that team lead, like we can kind of create our own little micro communities where we are producing and getting this stuff out. So yep. as far as like, I'm assuming it's an essential service for us to drive these to whatever facility says, yes, we need these tests. Right? I mean, my, my thinking during, okay, so we've been- right. Am I hearing that correctly? Is there anything I'm missing? You're not missing anything. Um, my thinking though, we're, none of us, unless, well, no, some of you are medical professionals. I am not. So while we're in shelter, um, my community, as of now, we're not big enough yet to, for this not to be possible. We're going to meet at a grocery store twice a week. We're going to have a, Northern, a North Orlando and a South Orlando Whole Foods. And one of, one of our leaders, 
will be there, you know, on, on Mondays and on Thursdays. And anybody donating textiles comes to the car. You leave your trunk open, you stay in, because we're in this process, we're honoring the six foot distance. We're doing, you know, we're staying, staying compliant. But um, I'm doing, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like bypassing the fact that we're really not allowed to go anywhere by getting everybody to go to the grocery store where we are allowed to go. So I don't want to send volunteers traipsing all over town to facilities because I don't want anyone to suffer the consequences because we don't, I can't secure for us the letters that'll let us pass safely, but we can all grocery shop. So that's my plan. Your administrator would probably like you guys would arrange if you're a group of five, it doesn't have to be as streamlined. Like right now, I think, I think we have over a hundred volunteers and 60 people sewing. So it's, I, I need systems we're, we're that we decided this today. I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, that's our plan. And I think that you have the facility send a representative to you. That's it. That's it. That's what I was going to tell you is, um, you know, I'm not putting our home address out for the broad public, but once it's been validated that yes, we have a connection, I'm the one giving it to the connection. Then I make a private connection with that person um, because they have to be out on the road to get to work. Yep. Um, and we're trying to make sense that the connection is within the, the normal driving distance, right? That, you know, someone's not coming to me, you know, that's up in Maitland or something like that. Yep. Uh, and, and that's where you're right about these groups, pods, whatever you want to call them, can be helpful of that resource of yeah. making sure that people can get connected correctly. The right. DPS, the DPS solved the problem in Illinois. They were amazing. And that was how they did their drop off and pick up. They did it at grocery, they, they were in shelter and they did it at grocery store parking lots. And when I read that, I, it just kind of put the, the bright bulb. I was like, solves all problems. Right now, if you guys decide that my wish of you also would be that you do this and then in the process of doing it, you'd be recruiting other groups and take the information and then pass it out. The spider, the sp if we want to solve this problem, if we have a 2 billion mask, one, you know, like if we've got a mask deficit in the billions, it can't stay in these small little places. Um, and, and I really do believe in compound, compound, you know, how things compound. Like if I tell, if I make a hundred masks and then I tell one person to make a hundred masks and then they tell, you know, like there, it just, I don't need to explain. I'm talking too much because I'm tired. Could you, could you go into, I mean, you need people to cut the bags. You Like there's yeah. so many other pieces to this than just yeah. securing of the material, asking, for, you know what I mean? I feel like there's more pieces that like, there's I'm interested so. in cutting patterns. Like I'm not interested in sewing. I'll deliver stuff. Jim can deliver stuff. We can move stuff around. Yeah. If, you know what I mean? Like, so if I wanted to cut patterns and you also have a lot of questions off in the chat. So maybe also. Hold that. Oh, I have 26 questions. Yeah. So that, that is brilliant. And I love actually the idea of creating a micro creating a micro movement because you guys can decide that yourselves that with a simple, with a simple pattern, the more you make it like a factory, actually, the more efficiency you have. If one of you wanted to cut and then one of you wanted to, you know, like sew the edges I can cut. for pleats, you know, it, that's actually the most efficient uh, way. So, and, and I'm in Seminole County. <laughs> Hey, you're hey. so lucky you can move around. I can. You're the driver. So I can move around a lot. And I am thinking of doing what you did with your neighborhood, um, you know, your neighborhood and, and a group that I belong to here in Sweetwater Oaks. We have over 1,300 neighbors and um, collect bags, deliver, collect, cut. I'm willing to do all of that. Um, can't sew but I can do all of that. So, you know, I, I agree with Beth. There's so many other things to do yeah. that if you can't sew, you could at least deliver and drop off and mm -hmm. collect bags and do everything else that's needed. Also, let me speak into you. I didn't catch your name and you just disappeared. Oh, there you are. Her son is in uh, with Angela in her classroom. <laughs> oh, how fabulous. So you, you, would be actually one of the greatest, listening to you talk, a role I can see you playing as advocate. You'd go out and find a hundred sewers. Like if you can't sew, that doesn't mean that you can't grow this movement. If you, right. can, if you can recruit sewers, 
you can start multiple little micro, you know, and, and if you're in a neighborhood that's enclosed, you guys can, are free to move around on foot and bike and you can drive your car around your neighborhood. I, um, I put out the call to action for the bags in my neighborhood. I'm in Maitland and it's a very like tight integrated neighborhood. Um, that day people were riding their bikes. They were dry. I mean, it was like, we got 900 bags in a day. I mean, there were a couple boxes, but yeah, you can, you can, you, a great role is the organizer, promoter, and recruiter. If, you know, so yes, yes, to your point, yes. Did you want to answer some of the questions since you've got more questions? To I'm the looking. Primary question is to where to get the materials. For your mom, if you have a mom who lives far away and she wants to do this, you can actually, we can buy it and it's $2.25. For $15, for, no, I think it's 20 bucks. Um, I do have a resource. I'm going to post it on the Orlando Facebook Strong page. We have a resource for uncut yardage of non-woven polypropylene. And, um, you know, you, you can get to her in three or four days. She can download the pattern and print it. And then um, straps are another question. So we can get into that. I, I have a lot of literature about it. It's probably better just to, you know, share with you the resources and possibilities. Straps is basically anything that's not too stretchy that's a strap. We're using shoelaces. We're using, you know, like anything, just think about things that feel good. Think like a clothing designer. You want your person to be comfortable and durable. Uh, so yes, mom, where to get the materials. Um, like if you group up, you can use your strength for sourcing or just pulling our recommendations off the site and get it in your mom's hands. And that equips her to do it. Uh, oh, I love that. Hi from Beth Hobart. Let us know how to get the materials. I think we've covered that, yeah. And I have, my work tomorrow morning is to get the second generation pattern up and also get um, a resource guide with links that if you just wanna buy it, because a lot of my volunteers are like, I don't wanna deal with these bags anymore. I just wanna buy stuff and give them to a sewer. We have a lot of people who would love to do a monetary donation and they don't really wanna be involved in the practice. So they're actually, I'm getting, I'm harnessing people to buy materials and then ship it to sewers. So five days in, I'm trying to get out of the middle of this as much as possible and equip, I'm really wanting to, I'm really wanting to empower people to, to basically run their own little life-saving movement um, and just give you guys the tools and resources and, and kind of like permission, you know what I mean? Everybody's scared that what they're doing isn't gonna help, but you know, it's, it, I want to get it validated so you know it will. Um, next generation, I'm working with um, Dr. Worley and we're going to be slipping a filter into the second pattern actually has, um, it's really, I am really proud of this pattern. It has an internal pocket that's comfortable, but it opens the two layers up. And then you put this filter inside that's going to be patterned to the shape of the face mask. And that's the one we think is going to approach N95. It's going to be very expensive because the filter is really expensive, but that's what we'll reserve for surgeons and, you know, like the, the practitioners, the nurses, the people that are working with sick people. Um, and we're working on funding for that. It's, that's more complicated. Um, can I yes. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what your website is? And on your website, you do have the, I just want to look at it. I mean, I'm yeah. already making them. I've already made, I don't even know how many. I'm seeing cross-eyed and doing this in my sleep right now. Elizabeth is a rock star. Elizabeth. <laughs> no, I'm really not. <laughs> I think if you're here, you're a rock star. I'm, I'm going to guess if you know. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go into Beth's post in the comments okay. and I'm going to link to the Basically, I'd love you to go first to the blog where, where, oh, sorry, my husband's going to feed our dog. Oh, on, there she is. Lucy, come on. Brian's Lucy here. It's my Brian. He's on his way out. He's in, he's out. Um, I'm going to link you guys to, I encourage you to read the blog first because it gives you kind of the, sort of like the thorough talking point, and then it'll click through to the product, and the product, it's a free product, but it gives you all your resources. And, um... I'm working and what if I, I recommend, I don't know if it's too much noise for you because I understand there are a couple other Facebook groups, but we have the Facebook group called Orlando Face Mask Strong. And it's kind of where the larger community is, you know, sharing questions and, and like, you know, getting answers and basically teaching each other as we go along. So um, 
that is how I can equip you to do this. I I had a question regarding your kind of your processes. Do you have like all the roles defined and kind of the like optimum setup for these micro communities? Oh gosh, I, lo I would I would love to. Can you do that for me? I totally can. I can. That's what I. I think so. Beth and I were we were Yay, connecting. I think Amani. we want to. I was going to say that's like governance, optimal op operating model, processes, my thing. So we can figure that out. But that's the next step. Is what I need is like a real good idea of like these are the volunteers, suppliers. This is you know, and then come up with maybe three or four models that will work for different types of communities, and we can get that organized. And then Andrea, for our community, we can definitely make sure that that's you know being updated. We keep our you know. Excel sheet updated and all the things, but that's, we need a core set of people to drive that. So maybe yep. after this call, we can maybe all meet because I think we need some planning and some organizing to do before we can get there. It'll have to be a virtual meet because we're all on furlough unless you live in Seminole. Yeah, but vir I virtual meet. And I work full time. So, you know, yeah. have to be outside of working hours, but happy to help once we, I just need the inputs and then I can create the structure and the materials. So you know, Amani, will you, Will you friend me on Facebook and can I, can I talk to you later? Cause I need, I, I'm a, I am a lifelong artist and mm -hmm. this is my weakest place is being organized. So I would really love your guidance. And if you'd like to step in, in a larger role, we're kind of like our organization system is evolving, which means the way it feels to me right now is like a monkey juggling, <laughs> but, yeah. but you might not have heard this. We started on Sunday and we're where we are now and it's only been five days so yeah and we can put something super simple in. we can put that you know the five people model which is a simple model but then yeah. if you people like our is a little more sophisticated we can have a better you know so we can have like three or four options for communities to engage and get set up so yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to digitize everything too so that all of all of anything that's in my brain Absolutely. Yeah. Digital solutions, they can download a guide. This is how you structure. This is the roles. This is who you fill. Like it should be super easy to use. So you can use your artistic skills and I'll use my organizational skills. We'll figure something out. I think I'm in love with you. Let me look towards, are there any more? Am I not, is polypropylene a non-woven material? Yes. Uh, it's po Oh yes. Yeah, so polypropylene and autoclave. So yes, Andrea, I think autoclave. What I would recommend with autoclave, and this is just as a pattern maker and a, and a, like I, I build samples for designers to do runs on. That was what I did in New York. Build it first and wear it for a while. You know what I mean? The best way to answer if it's a viable, if it's a viable text, sorry, I'm not flipping you guys off. Um, I'm, playing with my tired forehead. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Uh, my recommendation, it took me three days to get to generation two of the pattern that I could accommodate the filter and everyone's screaming, we want the pocket, we want the pocket. And I, and I was like, I can't rush that. I have to make it and then I have to wear it and I have to wear it for a while and I have to test how it feels. And so now I just got it digitized, but I have been promising this thing for two days. So Always, I always, if you guys are future makers, I don't know who's, I don't know what heart's being touched. Um, when you're experimenting with something, something, my, my simple answer is always just try it out. Bonnie, I have a sewing machine and two assistants at home. Nice. Okay. So honey, oh honey, your textiles are on my porch. I got you all the best colors. <laughs> you got, you got all, cause I know you, you got all the best bags. Is honey here or is she writing in? Here. I'm here. Hi. Oh, hi, it's honey. So good to see you. Hi, honey. I hand selected all your bags. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I've already, I've already begun recruiting some more, and I'm gonna definitely gonna do the uh, grocery store uh, drop off awesome. situation. Yeah. Awesome. So you can, can you then? Can I count on you to build a micro community? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You need one, you're a creative, so I know it's gonna, you're like me, it's easy to find the sewers, you need one person who's the talker. The way that I, the way that I phrased it is you need one person who can talk and four people who can sew a line. And that is huge impact. That's five, that's 400 lives saved, right? That's 400 people protected. Like there's, it's silly, it's just a grocery bag, but if you think about the impact of someone going to work protected and the way that their family feels about that. Like if, I, if my dad, my dad, they keep trying to recruit him to go back into surgery even though he's 74 years old. The thought of him going into the field with the protective material kills me. Okay, sorry. 
Shut up. Please. Based in California, Bay Area. Oh, hi. Courtney. Can I participate? Yeah, I want this to, I, we started it, it's rolling in Southern California, a celebrity picked up on us. So my pattern has now been downloaded in the like, tens of thousands of times, which is crazy. But there's a celebrity promoting Common Sewing. She's doing her own movement and she's galvanizing people around her. She was actually just calling while we're on the phone. And um, so yes, Courtney, Please take this model. Please find four sewers and one talker. Read, I'll put, the, I'll put the website in the notes. Just read the blog, click the product, and just start. And then touch base with us in Orlando Face Mask Strong. And I probably need to change the name to make it a little more global. And you can um, show us your product if you, need, if you just need to be quality checked visibly. But yeah, you can move forward. Um, Beth? Yeah, the meeting time. Oh, you did that. Already Mad done. Max. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Okay, go Mad Max. I love that. Oh, Jim. <laughs> that's amazing. Of course you can. Okay, are there any questions? I don't want to spend too much time because it's getting late. Um, are there any questions that are important that I haven't asked? So how, do, how, how do we begin? Like, I want to begin now. <laughs> you already so, started. So I agree. how do I begin? <laughs> Just create Paul. Like, Paul. my own little team? Just call people. See, the resources you need are all online. So you can just start calling people and say, hey, do you sew? Hey, do you sew? Hey. You're the talker, right? You're not the yes. sewer. Okay. The, yeah. the talker, all the around. deliverer, the pickup, because I'm in Seminole County and I can, yeah. I can move around. So that's a great question. This is a great building the model question. You guys are helping me fill this out. So I am like, Beth, one million trillion thank yous. This is a blessed moment. Um, the way that I would recommend that is you've already started by saying, I want to do this. You're in, and it's not going to let go of you. Cause trust me, I haven't slept in a week and I'm so high and so happy. It's, this has been, I didn't think uh, my first pandemic in my lifetime could be so empowering and so engaging, but it just feels so good to be just trying to fight it or you know what I mean? But anyway, you've already started, uh, start texting, write a list of anybody you think can sew. And well, on social media, you could be an advocate, like just get people together and get them started calling. You know, that's, I mean, honestly, that's all I did to get you all here today. So yeah. that's what I'm good at too. So I, I totally understand. So that's all I'm going to do is just call on people to, to get involved and, and to donate stuff to the sewers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to source some, um, I have a question. People. Yeah. Would any, would somebody please give the website? Oh yeah, commonsewing.com. Comments. And where can we uh, purchase the fabric, the, the reams of fabric that you- That is, okay, so you guys are helping me so much. I'm gonna flesh out how the team functions. So um, how a micro community, I'm gonna give it, figure out what it's called, like a tribe. Let's call them tribes. Does everybody think tribe is good? Tribe is good. Yeah. Tribe. Tribe. Right? It's kind of a word that we all use right now. So a tribe, how a tribe works. I'll flesh that out tonight. And I'm going to run it past y'all in a Facebook. Beth, if you could follow this up with putting us all in a Facebook group where we can communicate or some kind of vehicle where we can communicate. Okay. I would love to throw my verbiage past you because I have a feeling I'm talking to a lot of very smart women. And if you guys can kind of help me put together what I'm trying to say. So I will talk about how the tribe functions. And then I'm also... My homework tonight, tomorrow morning, is to um, create links for all click-throughs. I am validating that the places I'm calling have in the tens and hundreds of thousands of yardage available because I want this to scale nationally and I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to publish stuff that people can't access. So my resources I will be posting also. So yeah, it's, it, that's all going up. Um, yeah. Okay, so maybe after this, if everybody can PM me on um, on Facebook or send me a text, um, just so that way I can kind of stay organized. I'm going to text everybody. There's my number. There's my um, phone number. So either Beth, if everybody goes into the chat um, and puts their name and their contact information, oh, yeah. uh, the chat will save, and you'll have that as a record. And I would recommend uh, 
uh, you know, submit your cell phone number as well as your first and last name and your email. Okay, perfect. Name, number, and email. Where is that? If you hover either at the top or the bottom of your um, your your page, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the chat box. Awesome. Oh, so I can just type okay. it type it in. Oh my gosh, I can give you all these resources. Oh, you are teaching me things. You Mark are like, doing it already, so it's good that you know. Oh, somebody yeah. did it. Okay, so you go to the blog. Okay, Bonnie, you're the designer. <laughs> Bonnie, you know what's confusing, Bonnie? Your <laughs> name comes up as Amber Bottenhorn. It does. It's a friend of mine who let me use her Zoom. Her Zoom. Oh, that's fine. And I've, I've tried to disentangle it. Um, so I, I answer to Amber and Bonnie on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to do this with you guys if after we're allowed to go back out in the world and everybody's healthy, we can all meet at Maxine's and actually meet face to face. Oh, God. I cannot yeah. wait for the day to just right. meet other people and have a drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the simple so, I miss. Uh, well, many yeah. companies are doing virtual happy hours, so, um, you know, you can always come back and Zoom back up, Zoom link together, and do a, a refresh or debrief or what's working, what's not. Yeah. You know, Amani's really great about the processes, and that's really good. Yeah. Virtual happy hours. All that's right, guys. Yeah. Great. Great to connect, everybody. Good luck with your sewing and your logistics and getting things. I do want to add something, and I'm going to put it here. Um, there's a 3D printer pattern. So instead of using metal for the nose, it's a bendable plastic. And a friend of mine has a 3D printer, and she is gonna, she's got the file, and she's going to start she's going to start printing them. Uh, nice. That's very cool. Wow. And Andrea. Can I say something, Andrea? I have a friend in Boca Raton who is actually printing the 3D masks for her pediatricians, blah, blah, blah. I, if you can get that information to me, that I can get to her to do the pattern for that, she can do them and send them to me. So, and whoever else needs them. Right. So, and, and on the simple side, um, Dr. Worley has approved twist ties. Really? Perfect. Yeah. If in the the ideal is always cut metal or a three D printed piece, but in the time when we're in shelter, um, we sometimes have to function off of what's readily available either through. Will that rust? I was thinking of I was thinking of the um, soldering wire that is very soft and easy to bend. Yeah. Yep, I used a wire hanger. Um, the way that I built it, you can take it in and out to wash it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, I recorded this whole thing. <laughs> so I guess I can post it wherever. So, um, so yeah. So if people want to know what we talked about tonight, we've got an hour of content and a lot of information. So well, I'm not, I'm not real good at these um, technical things. It took me a long time to get on here to even be able to see you guys. I could hear you, but I couldn't see you. Oh, no. So um, I'm hoping I'll be able to still get in touch with you because I don't do Facebook. I'm an old lady. <laughs> what is your, did you put your phone number and information in the I did, I okay. did. I'll find yes. you. Okay, well I'm retired and I, I've sewn all my life, even in factory, so I'm ready to go. Oh, you, I guess so, you guys, whoever has got a tribe already, grab her, print her the pattern, put it in snail mail. When, once you're in a tribe, you don't have to have all the strengths. You just have to have okay. your strengths. I'm in Seminole County. Perfect. Yeah. You connect okay. with, um, I think it's Mr. Dar anyway, you guys, thank you all so very okay. much. I well, thank you for starting this. We all did. Thank you. We all did. So you guys stay well. Oh. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.